Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan. It is Butterfly Thursday. That doesn't rhyme, but <laughs> that's what we do anyways. So we're doing uh, this butterfly pattern by Tula Pink. Uh, she has had this pattern out for a while, so some of you have the original one. Maybe you didn't make it and you're jumping in and sewing along now. The uh, colorations in this version are changed to be fabrics that are more current so that if you want to match it you are able to still get those fabrics now we are on a chunky cross and it's the next size up from the ones we did last time so here is mine and i did a little substitution on these now I've, i have to do the rest of the blocks and that isn't going to happen for this video so i will show them the you know when i get them done probably in the next day or so so i'll have them on here so I want to show you the fabrics that you pick for these and then um, we'll come back over here. So let's go to the other side. Week three blocks are very similar to week two, but they're bigger. And so they're a little bit a chunkier uh, plus sign or cross. So they're called floating cross. And this is what we're making. So there is eight blocks, as it says, two in this, two in each of the combinations, just like you're doing here. So. Let's take a look at the fabrics from the kit. So I am referencing in the back that I find this the very easiest thing to do for this project is to just look at this diagram to match the fabric. It's very, very easy to do that way. So these two, these two are using the exact same fabrics but in reversed positions. And so that is this combination kind of a tomato, isn't that like tomato soup red? Love it, with this golden yellow. And then we have down here, we've got the blue. So we've got the blue block, and that is these two fabrics. That's the background. This is the cross from uh, the same print, but in blues. And then the other is this yellow with the orange polka dots again. So I like the, the orange polka dots, and you can see that, particularly with the polka dots, it's really easy to see how it's repeated, 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 repeated. You know, there'll be whatever's left over, we'll make a couple of half square triangles. So, you know, that is, you wanna be really, you know, don't overcut, just cut exactly what you need when you're doing that one. And so here are the two fabrics. Now, this is where I think I might trade. You know, one of our friends suggested taking my banana print, and this yellow is a little bit more green, but I'm okay with that. So I think I'm going to go ahead for mine and trade out this yellow print and do it, uh, the orange polka dot. See, I have to use the orange polka dot because of kind of the effect that it gives here, you know, in all the different spots. But the banana, see the banana? has a bit of orange on it on some of them so pink and orange are awesome together so that is what i'm going to do this particular block so each sort of each time i'm switching it up just a little bit with one fabric maybe just to make it a little bit more uh, me you know <laughs> trading out just a little bit okay so i am going to so to be honest i'm taping this very late i had just a day of things that kind of you know, <laughs> took long, everything took longer, whatever. And so it's very late. So I'm only going to be doing, I'll cut and sew one block, which I've already shown you, but I'll cut, that's all I'm cutting and sewing for the video time so that I have time to do uh, everything else and edit and upload it and all that stuff. So the others I will cut after my whole video is done and I will sew them up maybe in the evening over the next day or so, and then show you them as they're as they're finished but they're they're going to be so yummy I'm, I'm looking forward to this block because it's a little bit bigger we get to showcase the fabric just a little bit more than the previous block which were pretty small those were pretty small um, they're darling but i'm looking forward to sewing one of these up so which one i think i'm going to do the banana yeah is that what you want <laughs> that's what i want so i'm going to do the banana <laughs> Super fun to add the bananas. Just, just loving the banana fabric. <laughs> I had it in, it was in like, I had a char, I had a layer cake and then I had another piece of the yellow banana fabric because it came in a couple colors. All right, we have, I also got the backing. So the uh, Fat Quarter Shop, I was talking to them and they're like, oh no, you need the backing. <laughs> I agree. I have the backing for the butterfly quilt. Isn't this awesome? Look at that. I love love these great big suns now with the rainbow with the rainbow 
just so cute. You don't have to be using the kit to get the, to get the backing. So if you're using your own fabrics and you love this backing, which uh, yeah, who doesn't? So you can get the backing as just, you know, go and buy it because it's there as a single item. It was not part of the kit. And of course, the kits are sold out at the front quarter shop. So um, if you're jumping in now, you'll probably be using your own fabric anyways, but there are still some backing. So we want to be sure you get one of those. Now I have a little update from Norm Nanette and Baby Bob. They have made another television, another television, another video uh, debut. So they are out visiting our ambassador Bobby in Wisconsin. And I need to say this correctly. And I'm sure I'm going to pronounce the town wrong, but Bobby uh, brought Norm Nanette and Baby Bob over to her local quilt shop so much more in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I hope I said Waukesha right. <laughs> so here's a picture and you can go over. It's a quick little video they did on their Facebook and the link is down below. Now they're visiting with Bobby for a little bit. So we'll have a few reports uh, of, during the next couple of weeks of their adventures with her. Uh, and they're hoping for snow because, you know, yeah, it's Wisconsin, but Today, they had no snow <laughs> when the day they arrived. Oh, so how does that happen in Wisconsin? No snow. The Cupid box is out. You can pre-order the Cupid box. These are mystery boxes. They are always immensely fabulous. I have peaked. I love it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, there's, there's always a coupon in it and, uh, the fabric, et cetera, et cetera, with little notions and other things that are super fun. So you are going to love it. You put in a, um, I forget what you put in, like five bucks or something to reserve your box and then they'll ship uh, in a couple weeks. Oh, I can't wait to make it. It's just very Valentine-y. Yes. <laughs> I also have a mail call. This is from Tammy in Missouri. She sent, look at that, so pretty. And uh, she found this. You can tell, I know, I know she listens to my videos and watches my videos because she sent me money fabric. She said that, th that I would probably get more use out of it than she would. And this is so true. If you've listened um, me to me talk about my mother-in-law and her quilting, when she first started quilting, she's a banker. That was what she did. She was a bank vice president. And she would put money fabric in a lot of her quilts. Um, so... I am delighted to have a piece of money fabric. Now I wanted to answer a Q&A that came up about um, keeping paperwork with different notions and products and stuff. So I have two uh, examples that I'll talk about as to how I think about it. Now, you, you know, the question was, you know, should we keep it? not keep it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let me just explain. When you get something, let's say this is Doug's ruler, the simple folded corners ruler. This is Doug's ruler. Uh, it comes with a little booklet because Doug put a lot of uh, detail into his ruler and there's a couple of different ways you can use it. Now, for me, I want to keep this paperwork with the ruler or keep the paperwork period, but I keep it with the ruler because you have to think to yourself, when, I go, when you go to pick up the ruler, and you have to remember you wanted to use like one of the special techniques on it then oh, how are you going to remember how to do that if your brain says oh the paperwork is with it that's what I'm expecting then that's what you should do if your brain instead says I keep all these paperworks in a folder you know or a binder and I'm going to go over and look at my binder or your brain might say, I'm going to go on Doug's website and just go read what the directions are. Or I'm going to go to YouTube or Google and just Google it or YouTube uh, search it and do it that way. So you keep what works for your brain, not what works for my brain and not what works for your friend's brain. You do what works for you. So you have to know what is your method of finding information and what are you expecting now the other one is i brought i got out was the these little finger thread cutter this little thing finger finger thread cutter man i can't say that uh so it comes with a little it has a little direction 
I don't need these. I don't need this direction. This is very simple. It has a thread cutter underneath there. I know it's under there. I'm not going to forget how to use it. Uh, I do not need any of that paperwork. So this can just go in with tools, uh, it tools and I don't have to keep it. So that is how I go through that thought process. Now today we are doing fabric again. Okay, so fabric, today I'd like to, to have you sort of dive towards, <laughs> dive towards your scraps and thinking about your scraps. So the scraps, I, if you are, you know, I'll call it scrap management. If you keep scraps, today will be your day to think about that process for you. All right, so I am going to tell you, you know, and talk, tell you a little bit about my uh, relationship with scraps because I do not have a deep relationship with with scraps. I have a very shallow relationship. <laughs> so I only keep a little bit. Uh, in 2021, if you remember, I actually sewed crumb blocks from every little piece of scrap. I made 121 blocks of all various sizes, a lot of big, bigger, like, you know, 12 to 18 inch blocks. I made you know 121 of those. Remember, I strung them all about around the room here, and that was how I handled them that year. That was an effort. That was like a job. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I now have most of those, and I have not yet sewn them together because I've gone back to my normal work mode, which is not sewing with those. I have other projects I sew and other projects I want to sew. So you know, it taught me a little bit about how I work. I work best with two and a half inch squares. That is my go-to and I really don't vary from that. I have four boxes, just four boxes of two and a half inch squares. And once they get really full, I, I don't keep them anymore. You know, I don't, I don't try to, I don't make another box. I just start trying to use them. So I'm sewing the aqua ones. You remember I'm sewing these up. I'm doing the aquas right now. So I have four boxes like this. And that's all I keep. And then from the 2021 adventure, I had two boxes of strips because I was doing some strip blocks. You know, this one is all lights, which I have a lot of room in there. I can press that down. And the other is darks, which is up to the top, totally full. Now, scraps. First of all, ask yourself, do you make quilts with your scraps ever? Uh, are your scraps tidy or are they like, look like an explosion happened? Are you keeping them, you know, strips nice like this so that you can get a lot in the bin? Or are you just throwing them? Because when you throw them, they do not, they take up a lot more room and you get a lot less in the container when they're just jumbled up and thrown in. Same with the squares. I would not get as much squares as I have in here if I was just kind of jumbling fabric in here randomly. These are stacked nice and neat. And so they will, they will, they hold a lot. Like even this, like this one here, I can press down. I can still get a lot more on that stack. These are pretty, these are pretty uh, firm already. <laughs> this, those ones, it's just that one. Um, but there is a way, first of all, if you are like, oh, I can't get rid of them, but they're a mess because they're not tidy, then maybe you wanna look at making them tidy. Maybe that is the number one thing for you to do with them is to not be throwing them just in a bag, which takes up so much room, so much room. It is so ineffective. If you were to have them flat and laid like this, they would take up a lot less room. And so to experiment, take one of your bags and iron all the stuff and cut it to some sizes and store them flat and see how much space they take up. A common way to approach sizes is to cut them into what are pre-cuts, two, um, two and a half inch squares, five inch squares like a charm pack. And if you um, want to cut two and a half inch strips, and then if you want to keep big squares, keep 10 inch squares like a layer cake, because you're always going to find quilts out there that use um, charm packs and layer cakes and jelly rolls for the two and a half inch strips. So now you have patterns to use. People do all different sizes uh, and that just depends on how your brain works. Now over at the community page, I um, got a post. This is a post, whose picture is this? I think it was, 
Okay, yes, Jan. So it's Jan's did, uh, answer in a post about how do you store your scraps. So this was Jan's picture. Uh, so you can go over there and look at other people's ideas about how they store. So if you want to be storing stuff, today is the day to think about that. So that is all the fabric talk for today. I went ahead and just clipped a few pieces of me going through the Notion stuff and I thought you might have fun seeing that. So let's take a look. So I think there's going to have to be oh, some uh, letting go of this particular drawer. So I have a plastic bag to put things in. Let's let's take a look. Let's see what's on here. Oi, 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 oi. Okay, so first of all, let's just talk needles. All of these, these are gorgeous little boxes that have um, different needles in them. There's like a container in each one, you know, embroidery needles. These are from Tulip. And the thing is, I have been, I have been hand sewing for a very long time and I have needles that I like. and. I have a lot of different needles that are in my koala station here drawers and those are what I go to and I don't really go to get these so cleaners like these little these are nice I like these these little cleaners so I need to tape the end or do something because they keep falling out oh it has a sticky thing it's still working okay so those can those can stay uh, this was about the needles, about the tulip needles. Whoops, there we go. I've got one set of things, which is a lot of the so fine markers and glue sticks and all that. I need to sort through that. I have got an excessive amount of washi tape. I, I do not need this much tape. See all this tape? Look, 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 look. More tape, more tape. Look how many. They're cute. They're lots of fun colors. But I think, look, there's another one. So. I do not need all of these. So I, you know, they come in packs. They would come like, so this is probably like three different times. I got packs or I got singles, whatever. So I'm just gonna put those in here and I will keep a couple and not the rest. So it's Tuesday night. I asked over on Facebook, which drawer should I empty? Was it three, four or five? in the red cabinet and so I went with four because three has a lot of stuff in it and four seem to have less stuff <laughs> so let's take a look oh my goodness oh my goodness these are clamps I use when and I've used them forever I've had them for I don't know 30 years it seems like but I clamp onto the table when I'm doing basting uh, I'll talk about that in my machine quilting book there is a bunch of tape. I've got double-sided tapes, and these are duct tapes for um, putting on the painter's tape, rather. They're like painter's tape, not duct tape. No, 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 painter's tape that I can put down for quilting next to if I want to quilt lines and I want to mark them like that. And then a new bias maker. These are my favorite bias makers. This is the half inch, which is my favorite of the favorites. This is the one I use all the time. So this has quite the cascading effect. I went to put the things in the long-term, you know, notion buckets <laughs> that I have, and I'll show you those at some point. Uh, and I found this in there, which had some clips and it had all of this. And these are my, uh, when I was teaching, I had this bag for all of my markers don't make me stop this car, which cracked me up. My girlfriend gave this to me because I was on the road so much. Uh, and so now I have these. So basically I need to see, do they work? And what will I do with them? Because honestly, I do not need markers anymore. So these will probably, I'll probably keep a couple. But okay, you get the idea. I will go through and test them and if they're good I'll keep a couple and then the rest will go off to somebody else to use not me <laughs> uh, be, oh, also today if you want to go over to Kendall Taylor's website he is doing a giveaway and it includes my um, a jelly a jelly roll or you know a strip set a two and a half inch strip set of my fabric Morrison Park 
that's one of the best part of the prize and some background fabric and then I'm going to also be sending a digital copy of my pattern stitched so somebody can make that up if they when they win he is doing a um, giveaway when he hits his next level subscriber level so you want to be sure you go over there and subscribe and he's also doing the block Wednesday videos which I forgot to mention in the video yesterday but I did tell you in the website article all right tulip pinks block this is this is coming along and it's so cheerful I just want to leave it up there all those bright colors also get your backing okay get your backing for the butterfly and order your cupid box so that you have a darling little quilt to make okay I love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the Sloan zone I will see you online